Hi, this is Debbie and thank you for joining me today. I thought I'd start a new mini-series called Inspired By. Most of the time I like to follow my own path, however the work of other artists does influence me and I like to give credit where credit is due. I also mention if a card I'm making has been inspired by someone as that is the etiquette with these things. But I thought it would be fun to take it a step further and create this Inspired By series. My muse for this first episode is Christina Werner. Many of you probably already know Christina. She has a big following, but I'll leave links below just in case. In particular, I choose to follow along with a card Christina did back in 2018. The fun part is that Christina's card was inspired by CC from Creation CC, so this is almost like a chain with one person being inspired by another. What I love about Christina's card is the loose watercolour in muted shades around the floral arrangement. Recently, Sam Sistamp brought out the Friendly Flower set as part of their monthly card kit back in April, I think it was. The card kit is now sold out, but the stamp set is available separately. The Friendly Flower stamp set has the perfect large floral bouquet image for this style of card. I have been dying to break open the new Salvage Patina colour from Tim Holtz. It has the real potential to be my favourite blue-green moving forwards. The range has everything from distress ink and oxide ink through to spray stains, embossing glaze, the lot. I started by adding a piece of Fabriano Artistigo Extra White Cold Press watercolour card to a board and taking it down. I then spritzed it with the water and used a brush to move the water around to make sure it wet the whole card. I then pulled out the Salvage Patina Distress Oxide Reinker and Distress Ink Reinker and put a few droplets of each into a watercolour palette. As you will see when I start to paint, I didn't need to add anywhere near as many drops as I did because of the intensity of colour in these reinkers. I then used a large brush and dipped lightly into the Distress Ink and swiped that over the wet card from the top down. Halfway down I switched to Distress Oxide and continued to brush the colour over the card in a sweeping side to side motion. I went backwards up the card with a brush to finish before drying the background with a heat tool. I then sprinkled a little water over the panel by spritzing into my hand and then letting the droplets fall from my fingers. This is something I've seen Christina do. I'm not just trying to follow along with the general card design, but also techniques Christina uses. I left the water on the painted background for a few moments before sopping up the water with a piece of paper towel. Because Distress Inks react so well with water, the water droplets have lifted some of the colour from the panel to leave an interesting mottled background. I dried the panel again and then removed the piece from the tape and placed it in the misty, along with the large floral image from the Friendly Flowers set. I stamped the image in Versifying Claire Nocturne ink and stamped it a couple of times to get a good impression. I placed the stamped panel back on the board and taped it down again. I keep taping this down because I used a lot of water and being taped to a board will help prevent the card warping. I spritzed the panel with water so that any colour I added from here on out would move around in the water to give the loose look I was after. I pulled out my Distress Ink Minis and pressed them onto a tonic craft mat to act as my palette. With this first layer I kept lots of water on the paper so that the colours mixed and blended together to give those loose patches of colour around the bouquet. The colours of Distress Ink I used were Forest Moss and Crushed Olive with a touch of Rustic Wilderness later on for the leaves, Vested Berries along with Aged Mahogany and Fired Brick for the flowers, and Seedless Preserves for the berries. I was mindful of the colours I chose, as I mentioned Distress Inks reactivate water, and so I wanted any colours I added on top of the Salvage Patina layer to play nicely with the blue. Greens play nicely with blue, as do the reds and purples I bring in. The main colour to avoid when mixing with a blue layer is orange as this is opposite on the colour wheel to blue, i.e. it is blue's complementary colour and when complementary colours mix there is a chance of creating mud which I wanted to avoid when painting flowers. I dried the first layer and then went back in with more colour. I looked to keep this layer with more concentrated patches of colour, even some hard lines in places. Then I again dried the layer before coming in with a final layer of colour this is the layer of very little water, the darker distress inks and more hard lines. I then dried this piece before adding splatter. 
I'm delighted Christina added splatter to her card because you know me and splatter. I use the palette I have with dried white gouache and perfect pearls mixes and I reactivated the mixes with water and then liberally splattered over the whole panel along with a little of the leftover green ink and salvage patina reinkers. Then I remembered Christina's card had gold splatter so I thought you know what you can never have too much splatter and so I got out my Fine Tech metallic set and splattered with a bit of gold too. I put the watercolour panel to one side and then took out the diagonal stripe image from the Friendly Flower set and stamped it in Nocturne ink on ivory card before trimming it to a skinny strip. I added Gina K Connect glue to the back of the strip and attached it to the front of the now dry watercolour panel. I then trimmed the panel to be just smaller than an A2 card base. As for the sentiment, I did debate stamping it directly on the panel or inside the card as Christina had done, but in the end decided a subtle piece of vellum would get a sentiment on there while not detracting from the flowers. I stamped the Missing You greeting on the vellum with clear embossing ink and sprinkled with white embossing powder. I then heat set and trimmed the sentiment into a strip with a craft knife and clear metal edge ruler on a cutting mat. I wrapped the vellum around the panel before adhering and I decided to cut the end of the strip at an angle for interest to prevent a chunky blunt end to the strip. The angle just made it look more elegant to me. I kept the vellum in place in two ways. Firstly and most importantly for keeping it secure, I used washi tape to retire to the back of the watercolour piece. Then to keep the flap from moving around, I added tiny pieces of foam adhesive to the back of the vellum behind the lettering of the heat embossed greeting. These little pieces keep the vellum from flapping open. I also added foam adhesive to the back of the panel and then added it to a card base cut and scored from Nina Desert Storm card in the £100 weight for sturdiness. Finally, I added a few gold sequins and eggshell pearls which I kept in place with Gina K Connect glue. And that completes this card, inspired by the amazing Christina Werner. I will link directly to this card so you can check out where I was working from. I highly recommend you give Christina a follow if you don't already. She's such an accomplished graphic designer, stamp illustrator, card maker, videographer, photographer and has two adorable kitties too. I hope you enjoyed this Inspired by series as I have so many people I'd like to introduce you to if you don't already follow them. Well that's me for today, I'll leave links below to the products I've used and I'll also link to a coordinating post on my blog. I want to thank you for joining me today and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll also pop a couple more videos up on screen for you to check out too. Thanks and I'll see you next time.